You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. The Dating Den with Chris Gillis. How to handle yourself when you know he's dating multiple people. Ladies, welcome into the Dating Den. Coming to you live from day, today from a random hotel in Ashland, Oregon. Um, <laughs> we're in Ashland because there was so much ash uh, that we could not go to our campsite in Crater Lake. And we drove for six hours and then it was like seven o'clock at night. We we're like, yeah, never mind. So we... Uh, are here in a hotel room. That is the dating den. Where are you right now? Chris uh, I'm in Venice Beach uh, next to the Venice sign. Living it up. Next to the Venice sign, living it up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's not in a uh, tent. Yeah. He's not sleeping in a tent lately. No, I'm not that close. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that, that close to the Venice sign. No, don't have the, uh, the luxury of the beachfront properties like uh, a lot of the... Uh, residents here do yeah, exactly <laughs> the, the, tent, the tent resident <laughs> uh the tent residents so we are here to talk about bachelor and paradise but we're really here to talk about is so many other things um one of the things that really struck me on this episode was um this thing with demi um who mm. for those of you who don't watch you know like demi came onto this show and was a minor character. And then in Bachelor in Paradise, she was in a love triangle. Her whole thing was, um, I'm bisexual. And then she dated a guy and then she was in a relationship with a woman. And then she ended up staying on with a woman. And that was very exciting for the show. And then she got engaged and then she broke up and now she comes back and she is, let's just say, and this is what I want to talk about the, the difference between confidence and overcompensating for a lack of confidence that is deep, like low self-worth, because this woman came on like a house of fire, like she's going to get in there and everyone wants her and it's going to be easy and like I don't ever get rejected. And then I just thought she came across as so unattractive. So let's break that down. So first of all, what's what do you think about that whole topic? Like, was she confident or was she feeling herself too much? And it's really cocky because actually she's really insecure. Sure. I, I, I do think it's a great topic as you right? where when you're trying to and you're in some sort of where, 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 I was going to say, you know, big city. That's not true. You can be in a small city. Uh, there's often times where you're dating somebody and they're you're not their only option. Right. And so you want to show up um, and not show your human side which is our insecurities and what's really going on and you gotta we gotta push stuff down right every single day and you know when you go on there and i could i'm sure that she had yeah she had a lot going on like marnie you like you just broke down and so I, yeah this is a great topic um i think she, I, I i know i understand why she did what she did and I, we all try to do it but i think she it fell really flat and it went from being con, you know from from there's a sexy confidence which you talk about a lot to just a flat out obnoxiousness where everyone's got that. I would like me and we watch with it. We're trying to having to create a little, our own little bachelor uh, nation crew, Marnie, while you're gone. So we have a friend over. Don't be jealous. And I'm we all so had jealous. that stink. We, I, uh, we all had that stink face where I looked over at the girls like, what the fuck? What is she doing? And all the girls and the girls watching, they all had that downturn, like, you know, that smile, like someone farted in the room. Like, what is this girl doing? And that's what, and that's how, <laughs> that's how she showed up. Unfortunately, she, it, it, she she blew right past uh, the finish line and ended up like last place. Well, and this is what's really interesting too, because, and we've been talking in our free Facebook group, which you guys should all be part of because we have really interesting conversations over there. Um, and I'm sure there's a link in the show notes. We were talking about this theme of this month is self-worth and self-esteem and how does that impact your relationships and other parts of your life. And I think there are characters on this show right now who are displaying different ways of how someone shows up in a group mm. setting. And 
especially here it's related to dating, but I'm thinking about um, uh, Demi, who's this like, comes across like, you know, I'm too good for all of you and I'm the best. And then I can't remember her name and I feel so sad. The one who got voted out, who was really annoying in her bra strap showed in Matt's season. Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Victoria, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Victoria. I think it is. We should Google. But um, yeah. she, you know, she came in Matt season like very much like I'm amazing, you know, like I'm the queen. It yep. was another version of that. Yep. And in this, mm. and she got a lot of shit uh, after her season, and clearly. I saw, I heard her on Clubhouse kind of saying, like, I learned a lot. I was sort of mortified by how I was. Like, I'm really working on myself. She comes into this show uh, trying to fake confidence, right? Like, faking confidence. Um, yeah. Right? And so then there's this, like, real confidence that's really genuine and attractive. Who do you think on the show has modeled the genuine confidence and attractive mm. in that way? Is there anyone that you can pick up on that seems genuinely By the way, you're right. Confident? It is, or we're right. It is Victoria P. Um, you know who uh, I would kind of say, I don't know, maybe it's because she doesn't give a fuck, but uh, Tammy, uh, you remember, you know who I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Tammy, <laughs> Tammy is, Tammy <laughs> is confident, um, but she also <laughs> likes sassy. to make drama. I think she likes getting yeah. attention from yeah, drama. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The confidence and, I'm thinking of is like, and I haven't really seen it. Maybe that's yet. It's almost like that Tasha confidence, right? Yeah. Where you're yeah. just like, hey, I'm here and, you know, I want to have a good time. And also I'm selective and I'm just getting to know everyone and I'm open. And because everyone's sort of coupled up right away, we're not really seeing a lot of their yeah. personalities. But I want to go back to this thing because... I think a lot of listeners, like, because I hear this all the time when I do um, conversations with people, they're like, no, I'm totally confident, right? I'm very mm-hmm. confident person. I just, you haven't met anyone at my level. Um, and then there's the, like, the faking confidence, right? Where you, like, intellectually, you're trying to go in there and be like, okay, I'm going to be confident yeah. today, right? And it just, your head is filled with so much insecurity I, that it's totally, really hard to manage. I, I think it's super, I think it's really important to add uh, or to note that it's easy to be confident when you're booed up, you know, when you have somebody, when you have a, a boyfriend, a husband, whatever it is, and girlfriends, guys out there. Um, but it's, but I think it's when you're single, when we're single, it is so, I mean, that's when we, you know, we get in our head and doubt and to, in all fairness, Demi walked in. Uh, she walked in, everybody hadn't seen a show, uh, you know, she was there, she was supposed to be kind of like a wrench in the gears that are already working. So every, most, almost everyone had coupled off already. So she, where she normally gets to just, you know, woo everybody and, and, and be more, has a huge selection instead. She's like, oh shit. It's like musical chairs. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. With, with like with one, you know, with, with one chair left with a lot of people, uh, a lot of other girls to compete against. And, uh, and I think, gosh, I, I'm thinking back, I'm just, you know, think you know about myself but dude that's that's when i'm generally uh yeah it's you know my insecurities and my puking overconfidence or whatever uh will come out as too so i, I think you know it, she deserves a little bit of grace and understanding for that because yeah it, it, it's it's hard it's hard i think i think right right when we're nervous that's when who we really are comes out um on there so i don't know like mistakes yes, like are get high abigail abigail is confident she well but she's really not too. She she. But she was exactly. humble. But she was humble about her in, about her insecurity and her walls and a little bit more self aware. Yeah. But one thing that I want to say about what we don't want you guys doing is in the faking confidence. It just comes across as you're so uncomfortable in your skin, and that people just kind of don't want to be around you. And what I saw, and of course we're seeing edited versions, but. Like there is nobody who wants to be around this person. Right. And she's really trying hard. She's like, hi, you know, where you're like, Mm -hmm. uh, like no social awareness. So that's one. Uh the thing with Demi that I really want to caution people around is leading with sex. Like my value in the way I'm going to get a guy (laughs) is sex. And, um, 
<laughs> By the way, I when I went to go do a podcast at iHeartRadio, Demi was there, and I thought it was Bring a Child to Work Day because this woman, <clears throat> she, was that. she is a, I thought she was like 12. Like, she is a really? tiny, tiny, tiny person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very tiny. And so um, I, I, she's very tiny. And um, it's really interesting because for someone that small to have this big, like, you know, like I'm taking up all the space in the room. And what I noticed her doing is like, my value is on sex. So like, they have a really fun date. And I would say Brendan was like having a good time with her. And then they have this conversation and immediately she like leans in She's touching his face. Um, Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm sexually attracted to you. Like, you're going to want to have sex with me, you know? And then, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I could just feel him being like, whoa, like this is (laughs) what, yeah, it's not attractive. And when, and we flash forward toward the end of the episode when it doesn't work out with that guy and he's like, I'm not feeling it. She meets James and she's like, within like the first five minutes that we're shown, she's basically like, you should give me your rose. Like, we're going to have sex. You want to have sex with me? And he says, oh, yeah. you're talking about the boom, boom room already. So what's interesting <laughs> is, and, and I know that I remember talking about this with Christian Anderson. Like, this is a, a topic, man panel. It's like, yes, men want to have sex with you. They think of sex every seven seconds. But when we lead with sex, what does vibe does it give off to a, a guy, a, a guy who's it's a quality right. guy? No, we want to we 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 want to be the line. We don't want to be like pinned down and eaten by a little a tiny little kitten. <laughs> 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 our, our prowess, Jeez, Louis. No, it's it, it's gross. And dude, she was even uh uh she was even like selling sex to the sexiest man alive, uh, equally minute tiny uh david spade she's like hey boy she got she had her hands on her hips and she was like rocking her <laughs> like hips and her boobs back and forth like what in the fuck is she doing why are you like sexy sexing up david spade even? yeah like it, she was warming up yeah it's so really interesting and i think that and i know like i'll be fully transparent like my identity from early on i was like that was how I thought that I would get boys that turn yeah. into guys is like you lead with sex. Like if you make it, if you're sexy, if you are good at sex, if you let them know that they could have sex with you, then that's how you get a guy. And I think that that can really be um, damaging, right? Because then we think our self-worth is just based on that, not for who we are. And what's interesting is James is having a conversation with, I think, Victoria and she's like, obviously, I think you're very attractive. And he's like, well, you want to get to know me, right? Yeah. <laughs> because the truth is, like, he is a handsome, big old dude. But, yeah. like, everyone wants to really be loved for who they are if they mm-hmm. are really emotionally available and wanting to have a relationship. If they are and they can't even get there, like, we all want to be valued for who we are, not just, you know, our sexuality. And so I just want to debunk that rumor. <laughs> That if you, um, you know, make yourself available sexually, it does not enhance your opportunities with men, whether or not you have sex with them, it definitely can create. And and on the man panel, guys have been like, no, that doesn't impact me at all. But I still disagree. Mm -hmm. I think there's something interesting about that. You have some dumb man panelists. We do sometimes have some dumb (laughs) man panelists. We yeah, really on your toes. We really, <laughs> really well. yeah. Figure us out because we don't have it all. But it's always it's worth adding that, yeah. It's not um, it's not attractive to just hit the same note over again, over and over. Like I'm fuckable, I'm fuckable, I'm fuckable. Like, no, that's okay. Yeah, we get it. Well, what else? Uh, yeah. Show me something else. Do you? You know, there's. I bet there's a millions of other interesting things about you that we can connect on. Cool. We both want to have sex. Awesome. Now I can. Uh, now I will continue to pry and learn more about you, but when you yeah, when you just keep offering that, a lot of weird red flags come up, and then guys are like, oh, geez, how many other girls is she? You know, I, yeah, I'm how many? I'm yeah, not, I'm I, not special. Obviously, nothing you special. You so now this this you know this this this, uh, this 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 gazelle is not really a gazelle. I trapped this roadkill laying dead on the road that anybody can come by and nibble on. That's no, there's no pride in that. Uh, well, show what else you're interested. <laughs> I love that. What's funny too is if we um reference uh love island uh for a minute 
is the the whole premise right. of that show is you know they couple up and then they go to this other villa and they have an opportunity to meet all these new people and what happens obviously with a lot of the guys is they're like ooh new candy right and they get attracted yeah. to that or whatever it is and then they all come back and they're like no actually the person that I have a connection with is yes. is more sustainable than someone that I just wanted to like make out with or kiss. So I think I think it's all an interesting thing. So if you were going to sort of say like a list of what are the no-nos that Demi did that were turnoffs to Brendan and we don't know who else, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, they yeah, are? I think I think um yeah, kind of be I guess, uh, being like overly loud and obnoxious and and instead of um and you're pretty good at this, Marnie. Instead of like saying, "Hey guys, oh my," like uh, calling out the elephant in the room for what it is, say, "Holy smokes, yeah, you know, I'm the last one here." Uh, gosh, I hope there's somebody. You know, just being honest, like I, I hope uh, there's somebody here for me to meet. Uh, we've seen it other times. They walk in and go, "Hey, raise your hand if you're not already in like a, a you know, an engaged situation." Um, but she didn't do that, you know. And so she goes, "I'm here to take all your men and your women, and everyone's coming down with me." Uh, you know, and so that that was. That that lack of that lack of vulnerability wasn't sexy, and it just it doesn't match up. Like you said, you know, mentioned she's so diminutive and tiny. It's like wow, so I just is strange. And then she just kept hitting the same sex note over and over again. I didn't like the way that she, um, instead of we instead of making herself available to be kissed by Brendan because she's yes, she's cool, she wants to kiss him, and like and doing all those little things that, that, that we talk about, you know, making so that you know batting her eyes and all these things. She reached in like. Again, like a little, you know, she reached in like a dude and grabbed him by like the back of the head and like yeah. he crammed him in and started making out with him. And that was when he's like, okay. Uh, just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. Well, that's, and <laughs> I think this is really interesting too. I'm glad you brought this up. Is then he, and I think women do this too. They're like, we have this great, we had a great date. We have a great sexual connection. So now that means I sort of have, like, this is my guy. And that's why when the guy pulls away or tech doesn't text or doesn't ask you out again, you're like, but wait, you know, like, how could he have done that to me? Like, as if like yeah. you own him and it's like, no, you went on one date and yeah, maybe there was attraction and maybe you kissed, but Ugh. like, whoa, like let it give it some space to unfold. And so he's telling her like, this is great. And you just kissed me and whoa, mm -hmm. that was nice. Sure. And also like I'm dating <laughs> other people. Well, I mean, I wish you would have said like, Hey, you know, I'm dating, um, Natasha. That's her name, right? Natasha. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's only, it's early doors. It's early days as they say, but like, you know, I just want you to know that like I'm exploring other relationships. He could have said it better, but I think he was just so like bleh, overwhelmed, um, that he was like, Hey, Gosh, you guys always nail us for saying it better i i'm I, we, I, it's so hard to yeah especially to beat off like a a tiger like that i thought he did a great job but i know you girls are marnie you're great at it no okay. i think he did like an eight. eight i think he, I did he did an did eight yeah i think he was like it was you know it was really happening in real time and i think he was just like holy shit and what's interesting too so what dummy did that's a turn off is then she took it personally and she, and so what we see that people do to compensate, which I don't want you ladies to do is you have to make him wrong or blame mm. him so that you can try, your ego can try and get out alive, right? Like he's a jerk. He's so mean. Like all these things she was saying about him. I was like, the player. Yeah. Player. I was like, what? I think he just was being really <laughs> honest and saying like, I'm date. I just want you to know I'm dating other people. So like not taking it personally is a really big thing. And I always say to the clients, like if you get triggered, like keep it on your page. And I think Natasha was like, Oh my God, I'm totally getting triggered here. Right. I'm making up all my okay. shit. I'm really been working on this. I'm trying to like stay confident, but she knew it was on her page and not to leak that to him. Right. Mm. And she was self-aware of like, I need a minute. Like, Whoa, I'm really overreacting. I just met this guy. Whereas Demi was like, um, you're a jerk. I can't believe you're rejecting me. I'm taking this as rejection. And all he was really saying was like, hey, it's early days. Um, we're not going to go back and pursue things because I'm exploring other relationships. Yeah. So I think also that's a turnoff. Totally. 
It's oh, drama. Is early days. Is that a Love Island? Uh, yeah, they always thing? say it's early days. <laughs> it's early days, but they say early doors sometimes. I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, so I think that also like, but the energy. So even if you're thinking, well, like I would never say that to a guy, I think we get the energy of that, right? Like, so I'm always coaching our clients. Like, you have a great date. It goes well. Like let it breathe. You can be cautiously optimistic. Um, you can even like drop a little hanky a couple days later or whatever, if you don't hear from him, like there's some dignified things you can do, but like in the end you had one date. He obviously, yeah. when you're online dating, especially you're like, people are talking to other people. And I think what happens is our ladies get so pissed that like, I can, you know, he, he got me confused. I can't believe, you know, it's like, obviously People are dating other people, especially at the beginning. So don't take that personally. I always say become rejection proof. Easier said than done, but good Lord, once you're rejection proof, you're, you probably won't get rejected. <laughs> you probably what? Won't get rejected because that's just so sexy and, you know, it's so attractive. Well, yeah. You're like, eh. that, Well, and it's Isn't not indifferent. It's that like, I know that this isn't personal. We're all looking for a match. And I love it when they just can say like, you know, if that guy has a better connection with her, then okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to be with a person who wants to like be with me. And, and I want you to explore, especially when we've been here for like five or six or seven days. Now, if it's like four weeks, you know, that's going to be a different story, but I just really, really uh, want to underscore that even if you don't you say or do that, if you have that energy of like, we had a really amazing date, we kissed, like you're my boyfriend. Why aren't you acting yeah. like it? It's going to freak a guy oh, out. Speaking of that, exactly. I'm glad you said that. Uh, so have you have you watched or are you watching F-Boy Island at all? Um, no, I have not. So uh, quick premises. There's F-Boys and then there's nice guys. And, and in the show, yep, they, uh, they, they, have, they have to you know, send some of the guys home. And then the guys reveal who they are. Babe, the guys, the nice guys. It's insane after, and they, and the guys are allowed to say a little piece after they reveal if they're a boy or if they're a nice guy. And the, guess what the nice guys always say? I, I really hope, thank you for this opportunity. I really hope that you find, you know, the guy that you're looking for, you seem cool and they're complimentary and they're exactly what you just said. They're almost, yeah, rejected. They're not sad. They're not upset. And it's the F boys that are all like freaking out and, you know, breaking out of, uh, uh, breaking out of their, their, their little Island that they get sent to, to isolate on. And yeah, but it's, it's the night, the nice guys. Yeah. They do see, they do always, they're all very complimentary and they want what's best for the person. So I'm sorry, I'm not your guy. I, I do think he's here though. Good luck and cheering for you. Huh. Exactly. And so I think that that's a really important thing is, you know, being that, being the person that you want to attract is a huge, is a huge thing we, we always talk about. So let's talk about this, Mr. Gillis. Um, so how do you handle it, right? So at the beginning, when you are dating someone uh, and the guy is dating other people, maybe you're dating other people. Some of our listeners can't even imagine dating more than one person in the beginning. Wow. Um, mm. And so like, <laughs> what do you think? Like, how do you know when it's okay to date a guy, like to date a guy who's dating other women? Like, how do you handle what's the most irresistible, dignified way to be in the dating process around communicating if you're dating other people? Yeah. When do you communicate that? Yeah. Well, first off, I think that it, for my guy friends who I, I talk about relationships with, I absolutely think it's necessary to date multiple people, even if there's one that they're already they're like, they're very confident. That's the one sort of thing in, in just for the fact that it gives us, it's a way to fake that, um, I guess, fake that rejection proof, uh, energy. Cause at least, you know, you're confident you're like, this isn't my one sole parachute. There's a backup that I can land and I can climb back up and do another jump if, if this one doesn't work out. So I think, yeah, I think, I think women don't be, be honored, be happy if, if your guy is also, you know, uh, you know, obviously not like married or no, right, exactly. Or like in a committed that's relationship. A little, that's yeah. a little too committed, but yeah, you, I, you should want a guy who's got other options and, you know, and then that way you can be the prize that he, he wins over. But I do, um, with that said, I can hundred percent. Yeah. I, I can understand how nerve wracking it, it would be. Um, again, these 
these reality game shows are extra stressful because they're like watching them make out, you know, uh, right. 30 feet away with somebody else. Uh, I cannot imagine, you know, being that uh, rejection proof or be that, you know, calm as the ocean. But um, I think it is so there's a I think when it comes to, yeah, if you're, you're, into, you're into a guy and he's dating somebody, um, I think it's important to have those. Those, those conversations to figure out where he's at open ended questions, not this leading bullshit that we see some of these gals do. It's like, so do you like me? Or, yeah, you know, where are you? Know, I'm, really, yeah. I, or, I'm really falling for you. How do you feel about me? Like, yeah. Oh, about. Now you're like, now he's got to match you or he sounds like an asshole or, you know, doesn't want to hurt you sort of thing. But just to have that calm sitting upright, maybe not like leaning in and stroking his face when you're saying it or also leaning back because you're trying to, you know, be, be, be distant. But yes, I have those, those conversations, those casual ones. And yeah, just ask, you know, how, how what, what good, how do we, what does he think of the pace of the relationship? Uh, you know, where else would he like to see it go? Um, you know, what are his goals? What, what is he, what is he, you know, yeah, where are you? Where are you looking for? Yeah, what are you looking where are you for? And, yeah, where is you? Where are you mm -hmm. headed? I like all that. Um, and I think people always ask me too, like, uh, do I need to say that I'm dating other people? I think you you don't. One of the things, you know, oh, he asked me out for Friday, and I have plans. I have another date. Like, do I need to? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, no, just be like, oh, I'd love to see you Friday. I have already made plans, but I'm available Sunday, right? Like, um, yeah. if he says, are you dating other people? Um, then you could say, oh, yes. And you know, my favorite line, especially if it's true is well, only if it's true. Is, um, I am, I am. And, and right now you're the front runner, right? Or right now you're my favorite or whatever it is, or I'm really enjoying right now. I'm really enjoying yeah. getting to know you. Um, sure. and I think that that's fine. Like I, you know, I just got online or I just started dating and I am exploring some other things, but like, I really like you, you know, or I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing where this goes, or I'd like to get to know you more, you know, whatever it is, be transparent. Um, and there's no shame in it. And if you have shame in it, or you have limiting beliefs that you shouldn't be dating other people, you should, uh, get that sorted out. Uh, because, um, what, what we know, and you can elaborate is that when you are really confident, um, and you know that you are looking for your partner, not just to be liked or to get, be picked or chosen or, and you're open hearted, you don't have your guard up. Um, the right guy will, you can't screw it up with the right guy. Yeah. Also worth noting that, um, with the open ended questions, um, mm -hmm. that to make sure that you get, you have your, I guess your, your your bullshit detector is on because a good, an F boy, a good, you know, hunter out there, he's going to, if he's, you can, if he's just wanting to sleep with you, um, and or get whatever he wants out of the relationship, then yes, he may, he may just answer you. He may be looking for what you want to hear. So that's why it's so important to, yes, to, I guess, have zero expectations. Um, Cause if he gets a hint of what you want, I fell, I, I guess I was, a, I was definitely a hunter. I, I hundred percent did that. Um, our buddy, Matt Boggs, Marnie, uh, trained, uh, my ex-girlfriend and, you know, to like, yeah, to, to figure out what, like, it was like our second date or something like that, or maybe third date, uh, that like, you know, like ask me what I want, you know, or if I'm looking for a long-term relationship. So she, I guess she did kind of, it was definitely a leading question because she defined what the relationship was. Um, yeah. And I was. I'm like, okay, I, I can tell what she wants. She wants me to say yes to a leading, you know, that I want a long-term relationship. So I did. And that wasn't necessarily hundred percent. But you were I'm with her for like enjoying. five years. Yeah, no, I did. I did. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I did. Um, and I got there, but, but there was, if I would have been more Brendan, like, which is why I like, I, I, I was like, I was like, Oh my gosh, I thought it was so good. Yeah. Um, he got her to pump, he got her to pump the brakes. Yeah. And so, and, 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 and that's, and that's difficult to do, um, when we're not whole, which I admittedly was not, I was, you know, selfish and I was out there trying to take care of me and put me for myself first. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I, if, if I, that, that's, that's a skill in itself and, you know, ladies, you're going to have to do that too. You're going to find guys who just want to, or, you know, maybe they, they want, they, they're trying to make it sound like they're not talking to anybody else, but they want, they want you to break up with everybody. Uh, you know, and just see them, even, you know, what well, they can do, what they want to do as well. And it's, that's, that, a, that's a real skill to get them to pump the brakes and hold on, you know, and set your own, set your own, uh, uh, you know, speed limit. 
Perspective. Well, and here's the thing I want to say is, as we round this up, because I think this is, and we didn't get to talk about last week's episode, but at the beginning when Noah and Abigail go on a date and he's like, wow, this is really amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like where this is going. And she's like, yeah, it needs to go slow. I'm slow. I'm guarded. Yeah. And he, and I was like, oh mm-hmm. God, you're sabotaging it. Like you can be slow, but also don't like basically call yourself out for being like really hard to get to know. And what mm-hmm. I loved about little baby Noah, who's like in his early twenties, but I think he did a great job. He was like, well, I'm hoping that um, I can make you comfortable and that we can move, you know, move past that and that, you, you know, you'll show me who you really are so that we can get to know each other. Cause what he said is like, there's slow. And then there's like, you have your walls up and what she, ulti- yeah. he asked more questions and she basically was like, well, honestly it's walls. And then he was like, Oh, yeah. well, let's talk about that. So there's a difference between moving slowly and having a wall up. So don't let your wall become your excuse for moving slowly. Um, you know, a wall is just like, I'm not going to trust you ever. Um, so I'm going to play a game with you and kind of string you along versus like, Hey, let's just get to know each other. Um, you know, consistently over time. So I thought that was a, almost a huge faux pas, but I think Noah handled it really well. Cause I think he really actually wants to get to know her. And he was able to ask that discerning question, which I think shows some pretty awesome communication skills. And what's funny is back in Matt's season, mm-hmm. didn't Matt James or somebody gave him a book on how to communicate? No, some yeah, other dude. My yeah. Buddy, uh, Beck, Beck, what was his name? Beckett, Beck, uh, uh, the, the Harvard, Harvard gentleman. Oh yeah. He was like, uh, here you go. Here's a book on communication. I was like, well, maybe Noah read that book. Cause I thought he did a great job. <laughs> I did too. I was going to say, Marty, you, uh, yeah, if we go back, yeah, you were not a fan. I wasn't either. I'm like, this guy is an F boy. Uh, he's not that deep. And he's, yeah, it's selfish. And he seemed to come back. A few of these uh, guys, more so than the girls, I know the women uh, brag about the, the work that they've done on themselves. Uh, but I think yeah, I was impressed with the way the guys are, are showing up. And, you know, they're all giving little nods to their therapist. Or <laughs> apparently, I don't know if ABC provides them. Or what, but they are. They seem to be dating with a little more dignity. <laughs> well, it's just so funny. Yeah, then it was. Yeah, last night they were like, "Okay, I'm gonna like I'm gonna use what I learned in therapy here." And then, but I saw a lot of people also just like walking away from conversations. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, and this is a good thing to note too, because I think it's a big people when we we were like, I've worked on myself and I know how to do it. But what happens is if you haven't really healed the stuff, like even if you're aware of it, when you get in a really high stress situation, you can yep. know everything, but your default yep. patterns just show up and, you know, you end up totally. walking away from the conversation totally. in tears, um, not being able to implement totally. what you know. And that's why I always recommend and say that awareness is not healing and transformation that will result in new behaviors. So just to know. Yeah. So like, yep. I'm like, I'm giving the guys props. The truth is the dude's got the roses. Just like I said, a few minutes ago, it's easy to be confident when you're in like the, you know, the the power seat hundred percent. So I have a feeling, yeah, we'll watch the dudes fall apart. And we'll be talking about that uh, as soon, as soon as uh, they're the ones scrambling and playing on musical chairs. And there's not a, a lot of places for them to see as well. So yeah, it's so easy uh, for us to talk about the ladies and you know when when we're in a relationship and, and it's just worth noting like that's why this shit takes practice it's not like you don't go to the dentist once and like oh we're going to therapy once oh well i'm therapized and i'm good to go no it's an ongoing process we're constantly checking in making minor adjustments filling up holes and cavities here and you know constantly trying to be your best and seeking a professional for help. (laughs) Yes. We highly, highly recommend seek a professional for help. Um, this has been so fun. I'm so glad that we're back on our schedule. Um, there's just going to be bachelor content for like literally the next nine months, I think. So I'm excited. For real? Oh, that's right. Because we have Michelle in October and then they're already pumping some new bachelor who we don't know who it's going to be. Who do you want? to see is the new bachelor. Well, I don't want it to be Greg because uh, I want to just think that he's a nice real right. guy and he just goes back to New Jersey and he doesn't want this shit. And I honestly hope that it's true that after the week or so of him possibly being the bachelor, that there was so much shit in his inbox that he was like, fuck this. I hope that happens. Cause I really want to believe that yeah. he's a good guy. 
Uh, I'm from Iowa. I'm naive. Um, I would be okay with Tyler Cameron just because he was interesting and he can be on camera and beautiful. he's beautiful. Yeah. And um, beautiful. Okay. And he seemed really genuine with Hannah Brown. I read an article yeah. where he's like, I want to settle down now. Like I've had a couple years of like, you know, dating models and I want to just live in a small town and have enough kids that make up a basketball team. Um, huh. And so maybe it will be him, but I hope that we all scared Greg, uh, whatever his last name is. Uh, <laughs> I hope we we're scared him to, uh, away. Yeah. We're going to have to, if, if they pick Greg, we're going to have to like delete the last episode. We <laughs> where we were like, I love Greg. Yes, he did. He's not about the clout. He was tired. You know, he's not about being a contestant. He's rare for real life. And yeah, he Meryl streeped us all. And we're, I've Soccer. been wrong before. <laughs> I've been wrong before, oh, for really. sure. It's kind of fun being wrong, though. It is. It's. I love. Yeah, we're learning. Uh, ladies, whatever you do, whether you get rejected or not, do it with some damn dignity. We will see you next time in the dating den. Bye bye for now. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard, and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com, and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.